Yana, what is EcoPeace? EcoPeace is a fascinating organization that works on uh, the protection of the shared environment in the Middle East region, um, um, bringing people together uh, from Israel, Jordan and Palestine um, under one objective of looking how we can uh, protect our shared environment, mainly focusing on protecting um, our shared water resources, our very limited shared water resources. Why did you want to work for EcoPeace? What were you drawn to? Since I was um, growing up as a child, I always felt that it was um, something that we lacked to really build peace, um, uh, just for peace in, uh, in the world. And uh, what better place to start than our region that's uh, um, full of animosity, conflict. And from peace building, of course, um, thinking about a very important human aspect um, that is an, um, a right for every human, water. Um, I decided that this is the, my passion. This is what I really want to do. Why is water a human right? I mean, can any of us survive without drinking water? How many days can we really survive without drinking water? And um, so we, everyone needs it. And uh, it should be available and accessible to everyone because that's the only way we can maintain. Maintain not to uh, think about uh, um, how we can um, go into more conflicts together, but how we should be really thinking of cooperating together to solve our, uh, the world problems. How are you able to bring together these quite difficult uh, uh, kind of negotiating parties together in a room to talk about something as fundamental as water rights? I focus on uh, identifying how we can change things, change perspectives, uh, starting with convincing the decision makers. Mm -hmm. So uh, research and preparing that scientific research that is able to convince our decision makers um, is a very important uh, part of our work. Information is power. Information is power. We bring scientists from the three countries and uh, um, international uh, researchers as well to work together so that no one is biased to one side. But again, we work with um, people, people in the communities who are most affected, mm. you know, by the water problems, by the uh, water challenges. And we uh, empower them with the information of understanding their water realities. Do you have any personal experience of kind of trying to get Jordanians, Palestinians and Israelis to come together around such an important issue? Um, I'm in the heart of it, basically, <laughs> and I've faced many challenges. Um, I used to think to myself, okay, Yana, um, it's important, but the conflict is, um, has created a lot of hatred and animosity among people. So I would sit with people and I say, I introduce myself and say that we're all in this together. And we start step by step. And when I um, used to gather people around to, uh, to discuss, let's say, for instance, the Jordan River issue. Um, I would hear from people and I would keep myself calm to, to take out all that um, negative energy of, as soon as we start talking about the Jordan River, the Jordanians would tell me, yes, why are you talking to us? Why aren't you talking to the Israelis? They're the ones that are uh, uh, diverting all the water. And I would say, yes. I totally understand. Mm. But let's forget the other side for a while and let's talk about what we have on the Jordanian side. I would take them and uh, accompany them on tours for them to be able to see that, yes, um, the Israelis are polluting. Yes, the Israelis are diverting, but we are also diverting. We are also contributing to that pollution because of the many challenges that we have on ground. And only that way was I able to convince those people, yes, now 
we're ready since we understand what's going on on the Jordanian side to sit with the other side. Otherwise, if we remain blaming each other for what's going on, we're never going to get anywhere. Now, everybody on Earth needs water to drink, but water management and water scarcity discriminates against the global uh, disadvantage and, and, the, and the world's poorest more than it does the world's, say, richer nations or wealthier people. How are you and EcoPeace working towards fixing this disparity between who is affected by water shortages and water, water crises when they do occur? We need strategies, we need planning, um, we need to have good water management, definitely. And there's so much we can do. Even if you have available water um, uh, for people uh, and those that are rich that can easily purchase water, um, you need to have segments mm -hmm. of how much is consumed. So as the more you consume, the more expensive it gets. Yes, you, if you have the water available, um, at some point the rich people want to fill their pools um, in their houses, but they need to pay the real price of that water. For the poor, you need to be looking at uh, bringing better livelihoods to those communities. Because those communities that are poor, if you are able to create projects on ground for them, then you're changing their livelihoods and they won't remain poor, but you have to, the government really needs to focus on looking and identifying with those communities, what are those projects um, um, that should be in place um, that would contribute to changing their livelihoods. How are we able to, to get the government who are elected by those who are um, sort of able to vote, know their rights, know how to assert themselves, why would, the, why would that government care about people living in poverty-stricken areas that, that necessarily aren't a target voting block for them? Well, it's, if you look at, if we want to uh, um, look at water as a political issue, mm -hmm. then it is definitely a security issue for that country, for the countries, basically. If you look at it from a security perspective, then you need to make water available or otherwise you're going to have people rioting um, and, uh, and no one or no politician wants to see uh, uh, uprises from people because they don't have uh, water to drink. Water management is not sexy. <laughs> people not don't want to think about it. Just on a real level, how hard is it to make this very non-sexy issue um, priority for politicians, governments, and, and, and the like. I always say that we each have a role to play. Each and um, every one of us has an important role to play um, in conserving our water, in understanding the challenges that we face, in knowing that even if we see that abundance of water and, and we have, um, uh, we really need to be thinking how to conserve our governments, definitely, it's not um, um, it's sexy not gonna win at all. Votes. It's not going to use... win you votes, is it, really? Exactly, right. not at all. Um, but with the politicians and decision makers also seeing that all of a sudden, Jordan took in so many different refugees and the uh, consumptions, uh, consumption rates uh, became much more less than uh, for the average Jordanians because uh, we have to share water. Um, which is again a basic human rights with all the refugees that we have, the government was struggling um, to really meet the demands uh, and there was a huge deficit between the demand and supply. So they understand that we have to go into that uh, uh, proper water management uh, issues. But it's not only the government's responsibility, so it's as the people as well. So this is it's my question all of to us you. that need to understand and we we have to understand, otherwise um, we'll all be losing. If the statisticians and the researchers right, one in four people live in areas that could face water scarcity or completely running out of normal, you know, drinking water. So that's a lot of people. How are we, how are we gonna change the discussion and discourse around this? As a Jordanian living in uh, a neighborhood in Amman, um, the last two weeks have been harsh.
because uh, there was uh, technical problems in the network and we our neighborhood did not receive water for two weeks. Oh my goodness. So um, you feel the stress that we are living. You feel that we, we as uh, uh, people need to be part of that deal to understand how we should be conserving water uh, on a daily basis, regardless if we have it in our tanks or not because at some point we're gonna run out. Um, so really, we all have to be thinking together. Yana yeah, Talib, thank you so much for talking to the Doha Debates. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.